Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here, and welcome to Mixed Media Soul Sparks. For this episode, I've got some interesting things for you, a flashback to an older one, and ways that you can build on your love of texture. I love texture, so I love to use gels and paste to create an interesting surface before I even begin to paint. Today I'm starting with, this is just a, a piece on paper that I had been using for a demo, who knows what I had it for. It's got this texture underneath, but you can begin with plain paper, canvas, board, whatever you want to work on. And you can use a mixture of any types of gels or paste. So gels are, they come, they're thick. So they're different than a medium. This is a quick tutorial on gels and paste. You can see that it's, it's thick. It's not falling off my knife. It holds up when I spread it out. It's not fluid like pancake. This one is regular gel. You can get them in soft, you can get them in heavy, but I'm just using the middle one. Now this is white, and when it dries, it's gonna be clear. So it's gonna show this pattern underneath here, even when it's clear. Now molding paste, on the other hand, is white. It's kind of a white gray, and when it dries, it is gonna be opaque. It can create a beautiful texture. You can keep some spaces open. You don't have to cover every little bit. But it's going to cover up this underlying pattern. Now that's a pretty dense, it's pretty heavy. There's one called light molding paste. It's almost like they took the same thing and they put a bunch of air into it, made it very light. However, when you apply paint to it, it's a very different absorbency between the regular molding paste and the light molding paste. So this one, very light and fluffy. It reminds me of meringue. It is also white when it's wet and it's gonna dry white. So when I put it over this area, it's going to stay white. But look what happens. If I put it on fairly thin, I can see a little bit of what's going on underneath. It's almost like veiling, so to speak, to where, think of looking through kind of a sheer curtain. You can see a little bit of what's going on. Now, I'm not putting this in any particular uh, pattern right now. I'm just showing you the different products. And I do have another one. I'll show you what happened as I built up those textures. I've got one other thing I want to show you. Uh, yeah, two more things before we start painting the dry one. This is another product I get at the hardware store. It's an alternative to coarse molding paste. It's an adhesive grout. It's not that it's, it's a little cheaper, but I use it for various different things, but I thought I'd just show you an alternative for uh, texture. Now, if you wanted to use one of your gels or paste and add sand or whatever to it to create your own texture, you could certainly do that as well. This again is a white and it's gonna dry opaque and white. It's much more dense than the light molding paste. You can hear that kind of scraping. It's grit in it. It's like a grout, so it's got grout stuff in it. I don't know, sand or something. <laughs> so, there's that one. Now, if you had string gel or other types of viscous, meaning real fluid, I've got this gloss medium, which is very, very thin, and I can just dribble a little bit on the top. And I'm gonna show you the absorbency of all these different things. When they're dry, what's glossy is gonna resist paint. What is gritty or light, like the light molding paste, is gonna absorb more paint. 
And the, so the gloss gel will kind of resist it. That uh, gloss medium will resist it. And the paste will want to absorb it more. Now here is one that I did that is now dry. Because you have to wait for all of this to dry before you can begin to paint it. I had a background that, you know, you can see some of the colors peeking through. So in these areas, this is where the, the gel was. I can really see that background. So on those little squares, when that dries, I'll be able to see those little squares. Other areas are very much obscured. So now, when you go to paint this, you want to use, let me get this plate. I'm going to start with some really fluid paints and build up to some thicker paints because as you change the viscosity, that's how you'll get different effects. It's a quinacridone gold, paints gray, and some white. Now when those colors mix, they're going to actually make some nice greens. So that's why I chose that color palette. Now these three different paints, this one is more fluid, that's thicker, somewhere in between. Technically they should all be the same, but over time they change because of, you know, the moisture is evaporating out of the paints. Just going to mist a little water on them. So a small amount of paint I'm picking up. It's really bright and gold. This is really what I want you to look at, is this right in here. So that's the grit. It's holding the paint. See those lines? That was from string gel. And the same as what I did with those drops of gloss medium. It's resisting the paint. Now if I came back in and wiped some off, you see how mostly it wiped off there? And here it's holding it. So that's the difference between these paints. Now here is a little bit thicker paint. I didn't add the water. Let's go in here with some white and go back in. Now my paint is getting a little thicker. I'm changing the viscosity. This is very thin. So if I look in this area, which is gritty, and I put that on, it's really going to hold it. Now up in here. And again, remember, you can even wipe some off to really reveal that underlying texture. You can see all those lines showing up. I think this is a great way to begin an abstract painting. So well, let's say you didn't have an idea of what you wanted to paint. Well, you did a background like this, and now you've got these lines, you've got something going on, and you can jumpstart from this into an abstract painting. Just remember your viscosities. If you came in, like with this thicker paint, you could actually drag it across the surface and change things. So it's all about the absorbency and the viscosity, meaning how thick or thin it is. Let me just show you one little trick before I go. And here's a quiz for you. This is a piece that I did in an earlier video, basically covering the same things. And see if you can find that video, let me know. Now here, as I was demonstrating it, I felt like it started to get a little muddy in here. Here's a way to push back some of that color, even after it's been dry for years, sometimes. Alcohol, isopropyl alcohol on my towel. And I can begin to go back to remove some of that paint. So 
playing with gels and paste, really explore and see how different paints work with different gels and paste. And remember to let it dry completely before you begin painting it. So share your, share your creations. I have a, a group Facebook page. Go to my website. You got all the information there. And I look forward to seeing what you create with these and how you use this to extend your paint because you're really using the gels and paste more than you are the paint. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, happy creating. Join the Creative Awakening community on Facebook, where you'll be able to post your art, connect with other creatives around the world, and ask questions. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks when posting your work on social media. Thanks for joining me.